This stage is for underground artists, entrepreneurs, and game changers. The people you see selling CDs out of their trunks, hawking books on the side of the freeway, sacrificing time away from their kids, dumping their savings in their tanks and hitting the road. It's for the weirdos. Trendsetters, alternative thinkers redefining the field with their alternative mindsets. Mike's Uncut is a movement. It's about passion, sacrifice, believing in yourself when no one else does. Mike's Uncut is for you. We all know who we are. And now, you will too. Welcome, Peoria. I'm your host, Ahaba Moray, and this is Mike's Uncut. As usual, I want to take a moment to thank the Carver Center for welcoming us into this awesome space. They offer mentorship, after-school programs, and even have a live art exhibit happening right now, so be sure to check them out. Our next guest has had an exciting musical career, collaborating with such artists as Nori, Flo Rider, and even Cassie. Help me welcome Marquise, all the way from Daytona. Hi, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So, you come from a very musical family. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like music is in your blood, or was that something that you had to grow to love? Um, honestly, I feel like it's in my blood. My uh, grandmother, she was in a group when she was younger. She never took um, music that seriously, though. Um, and my mother actually was a phenomenal singer. Mm -hmm. um, she, what is it, Apollo? in mm -hmm. Harlem. She wow. won Apollo in Harlem. Um, after that, um, I guess whatever happened, she wanted to go into the military, mm -hmm. you know, serve for the country. And after that, it was my turn. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So you've had the support of your awesome musical family from a very young age. Uh, yeah, I could say that. So um, how did you find yourself um, in Daytona with achieving such heights as being a ghostwriter and collaborating with some major um, names? Um, honestly, just working hard. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in Daytona, um, I don't want to say it was hard, but we never had that many um, media outlets. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was all, when I was younger, singing in talent shows, um, singing at church, and I don't know, I, I just kind of made a name for myself where I was from, mm -hmm. and then I just, you know, kept going. I, I started going to Orlando, started going to Miami, and then that's really when things started picking up. Really, they certainly did. So it's been about seven seasons, mm -hmm. and you say that you caught your big break um, when you um, impressed the likes of Stevie J and Benzino, who of course we know from Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, Love and Hip Hop how too. did that happen? Um, it's crazy how it happened. Uh, I was writing for a studio in Orlando, Florida, Plush mm -hmm. Studios, um, with my, my then mentor. And there was a producer that came in and he was just like, hey, you know, I, I, I like the way you sing. I just wanted to try to um, write something for Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. So we wrote um, a song for, or I wrote a hook for Rick Ross. He produced it and, it, you know, we thought it was good. We really liked it. Um, they, we pitched it. They never recorded it. They mm -hmm. said they liked it, never recorded it. So then like a whole, what, six months goes by. I'm in um, Jacksonville, Florida at college. And I get a phone call from him one day. He was like, hey, what's up, what's up man, what you doing? I was like, nothing much. He was like, hey, I need you in Miami like And tonight. who was this call from? Wow, oh, tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, that was from a, um, a friend of mine, Khalil, um, Kata Composer, he's a producer from mm -hmm. Orlando, Florida. He was like, I need you there tonight. So they flew me out and then I just wrote, I want to say, like six hooks that night, vibed with wow. them. It was crazy. They thought I was older than what I was <laughs> by, you know, the music that I was putting out. But at that time, I think I was like 19, 20, going on 20, somewhere around then. And um, yeah, they were just like, hey, what are you trying to do? I was like, I'm trying to, you know, make a name for myself, do whatever I can. And they were like, all right, well, you staying here with us. Wow. Oh, let's yeah. let's slow this down a little. So what year mm -hmm. in college were you at that time? Uh, I was actually a sophomore. OK. Yep. So I mean, I'm thinking that took a lot of faith. I mean, is this legit? 
Like, am I going to yeah. be back on Monday? <laughs> I mean, I have a six to nine, you yeah. know, what, <laughs> what was going through your mind at that time, you know, to get that call and say, I, I, I've got to drop everything that <laughs> I'm doing right now and just take a leap of faith? Uh, it was hard because I was on a um, full scholarship for music mm. at that time. And my uh, choir director definitely wasn't going for it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you're crazy, but, you know, it's the weekend because it was on a Friday. You know, he was like, it's the weekend, we don't have anything going on, go ahead and do it. And I literally flew out there and didn't come back. Mm. And how long did that journey um, last um, for? That journey lasted about like two and a half, almost three years. So, season one and two, Inception, uh, mm -hmm. Love and Hip Hop, the show that you hate to love, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, uh, what was your role? Um, um, so, I was like a personal songwriter for um, Stevie J and Benzino. Then um, also we had a, a group. We were called the, um, what was it? The 757s, Magnificent 757s. Mm. That was awesome. We, what was it? I wanna say our first gig was actually in Miami and we opened up for Little Kim. Wow. For her birthday and it was, it was pretty cool. What year was that? Um, that was, it had to be like 2010. 2010 yep so you know we um we did that on love and hip-hop pretty much i was just somebody that was that was around you know i don't want to say i was on there because if you see me on the show you don't see a name <laughs> you know i definitely don't think that matters <laughs> yeah true true <laughs> thank you um i don't know it was it was a cool experience i wrote songs whenever they um were in the studios late night even if they weren't in the studio, I was in the studio. I got to meet a lot of, you know, big name people, like T.I., um, Rick Ross, Jazzy Faye, who's a legend. Like, I didn't even right. know who, ja who Jazzy Faye was at first. I just remembered him. Um, Would you say that's voice. more valuable than, than the tag being on the screen? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've, I've met music soul child. I, I don't know. I've just, I met so many people. It's, it was just surreal for me at that time. It was like I was literally a kid in a candy store. Now, were all those players on the show at that time? No, 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 no. Right. All, all of them weren't. weren't. Um, they were just people who we would bump into in the studios mm -hmm. or who we were working with. Um, another cool thing, just to like kind of put that in there, I met Mace. And I was a huge Mace wow. fan. A lot <laughs> of people don't know he's from Jacksonville, Florida. I'm from Daytona Beach. So it's like kind of like, oh, man. <laughs> I drive up to Jacksonville, so it's pretty cool. Did you get that autograph? Uh, no, no, I, I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was shy. I was like, I don't <laughs> want to feel like a groupie, you know. But it was, it was cool because I was in the studio with his artist, and he came in and he was like, "Who, who's producing this? Like vocally?" Mm. And I was like, "Me." And he was like, "That's pretty good." But that was, that was your <laughs> chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Some people are worth. You know, I think if I met Hill Harper, I'm g pretty much going to embarrass myself. I, no, I just think some yeah. people, it, it's justified, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Back then, it wasn't really a big thing for social media with me. I'm still not a social media guy. Mm. But it was just like, ah, uh, just to say, hey, I met him. That's right. all I needed. Right. You know? Met and him, he likes your hand. music. Yeah. So. So, are you at liberty to discuss the real love in hip hop? I mean, you know, just ask me a question. I'll tell you if I am or not. All right. So what's scripted, what's not? Um, well, at that time, it was, what, seven years ago? Yeah, I mean, at that time when I was there, I wouldn't say it was scripted. It was just more of like, you know, hey, this is what we need to happen for ratings, I okay. would say. So is it safe to say that some of the beasts were kind of dramatized or um, not genuine because of the need for ratings? Well, yeah, I, I would say like there was like actual beef, mm -hmm. but it would get to point sometimes where it was just like, you know, let's beef it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Add a little more on there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Was there ever a time when you were working, um, the two seasons that you did, that mm -hmm. you felt like you were in over your head or you just didn't know where you were going or what was being expected of you? Um, actually, yeah. Um, in like the, the off season of recording the show, it was like, you know, we were still doing music, but nothing was being released, mm. you know, of from the Magnificent 757s. Um, and actually I had left and went home for a little time 
and then I had come back mm -hmm. and I kind of felt slighted because they, I mean, I guess the show must go on, mm -hmm. but they shot two music videos and okay. used my voice, oh. but they didn't have me in there and they had like the three backup singers pretty much saying my words, but it's not their voice. So I was kind of, I was like, oh, I kind of feel slighted, right. but I guess. Were you compensated yeah. for that? Um, technically, yes. It was like a per diem. So when I was there, I literally had to pay for nothing. Um, I had, you know, my own room at one time when it started getting real, they mm -hmm. were even like, Hey, like, we're going to pay for you a condo, you know, and get you a car cause you're here now. But it seems um, like there was, um, a trade off yeah, and yep, you have to much. ask yourself, what do I want from this? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so the per diems while you're there, you're living a life, you're being exposed to all these wonderful things, mm -hmm. you know? Um, something that you could actually be the star of, not just guesting it in someone else's story. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're recording and you're not there, um, and you're, if you're not getting royalties or compensated for that, mm -hmm. um, what, qu what, does, what questions are arising at that time for you? Yeah, so like at that time, I was like, I remember one time um, I was staying with Benzino and he was like, hey, tomorrow morning we got a, um, we got a scene and I want you and my son to be in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's dope. But then I woke up that morning, and everybody was gone. So I was just like, ah, you know, I guess I'll just go to the studio and do my own thing. But I don't know. I, I, I want to just say that it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was blessed for that experience. Um, but after a while, it just you look at yourself, and you're like, hey, more than, you know, being in clubs, being mm -hmm. around famous people, getting free drinks, free bottles, da da da. It's like, what are you doing? In you know the long I mean? haul. Yeah, like like yeah, like what what are you going to do? What did things just time? happen that quickly? Um, like you say you were invited to something, it did it honestly just turn out to be something else or do you feel like um, it was intentional? Uh, I wanna say it happened quickly for me. Mm. Like from my point of view it was quickly because I mean literally I was there and they're like, Hey, what are you trying to do? I only had like a day or two's clothes packed and then they were like hey you know you're you're here you know what I mean like you're here in Miami right now so I was like all right I'm here in Miami but then it just it was it was going so fast and I was in my mind I knew I was like man this is just going too fast you need to yeah. start asking questions mm -hmm. and things like that I didn't know you know that that was the young me I was like I don't really know this business and to be honest, I was kind of scared. I was like, I don't yeah. want to ask a question. Rightfully and then so. And just then like, the yeah, opportunity like, get taken. You know what I mean? I was like, uh, what should I do? So, you know, I, I played the role for a little bit. I learned a lot. I'm, I met a lot of people. I made sort of a name for myself mm -hmm. in Miami. Not a big name or anything, but like I, I, at that time anyway. Um, I don't know, what would I just, you do differently if um, you were able to do it again? What I would do differently, I would ask questions. Mm -hmm. And I would know the business instead of just jumping into something. Mm -hmm. And I would have some kind of representation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. w without, without, you, without the know-how, you're always gonna get taken. Mm -hmm. Like that movie with Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> you will get taken, so. Yeah. And, and I was gonna ask you, what would be your one piece of advice for young artists out there who feel like, you know, I don't, I don't even have to be paid. I just want the exposure. I just want people to hear my voice and associate that with me or, or see my talents, my writing, my, my dancing, my choreography. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your piece of advice when some of those, um, I don't want to say carrots are dangled, but when some of those awesome opportunities to gain exposure come about, what would be the piece of advice you give them? I would just say, you know, take that opportunity for what it is, but then still ask questions and know what you're getting yourself into. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're getting your, yourself into, people can tell you anything, you're mm -hmm. just gonna go with it. Mm -hmm. And then also know your worth. You know, if you don't know your worth, nobody else is gonna tell you your worth. Right. So that's what I tell them. Um, just know yourself. Okay. You know, know yourself, know your worth. That is <laughs> incredible advice. I think that stands for all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So we're gonna take a short break and then we're gonna um, be blessed with one of your awesome performances. So um, we'll take a short break and we'll be back after this. I'm 
Welcome back, Peoria. I'm Ahava Moran. This is Mike Suncut. If you're just now joining us, I'm sitting here with Mr. Marquise from Daytona, and you just performed for us a very emotional and intense piece. Mm -hmm. um, what was happening in your life when you wrote that? Um, so a couple of things are happening. Um, the initial thing that made me write the song was my uncle. My uncle, uh, my great uncle, actually, uh, Uncle Steve. Uh, he was a really big father figure, male figure in my life growing up. Um, and I actually found him dead. Like he had passed away and I had That's a heart right. attack or something. Mm -hmm. So and it was crazy because it was right after I came back from the whole stint with Love and Hip Hop thing. And I was like, hey, Grandma, let's go see Uncle Steve. Let's bring mm -hmm. him one of your sweet potato pies. Da, da, da. And it was me, my brother, my grandmother, and my great grandmother. Mm -hmm. And you know, we found him and he was gone. So. At that point, I was at like a real, I don't wanna say unstable part of my life, but I was yeah. just like, I was questioning a lot of things. You know, and growing up, I was always said like, hey, you don't question your elders, and one thing's for damn sure, you don't question God, mm -hmm. you know? So like, but at that point, I was like, nah, like how could, like I, I understand death, but I guess I hadn't really understood death with somebody that was, I had grown up with that was like super close to me. So I was just like, you know, I left there after that whole thing. Next day, I was in the studio for like 24 hours straight, and that was the song that came out. Yeah, and that's not the only time that yeah. your faith was tried and tested. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, another thing, uh, my, my mother, when I was uh, two, she was uh, murdered in Texas. She was in the military, so it was like we, had, we were in Texas at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but she was murdered. I mean, I honestly, I was so young that I didn't realize what was going on. But then when I grew up and I found out what happened, it was just like, like, wait, what? Like, my memory of my mom was only a short period of time, but it was like, it was real memories, yeah. you know? Um, and then growing up, anytime I would go someplace in Daytona, because that's where, you know, the family's from, They'd be like, aren't you Maria Fryer's son? And I'd be like, yeah, oh, you must have sang then. Your mother you know? also had made a, a name for herself, which you shared for us. Yeah, yeah, she, uh, what was it, in high school. It's, it's Really, it started in church. She was a great singer in church. In high school, she went on to win, like, all of the talent shows. I, When I went to high school, I used to always hear that, like, man, you really got to live up to the, you know, the, the legend of your mom. Mm -hmm. And, um... Then she also went on uh, to college, got a full scholarship for senior, and then she moved to New Jersey, and up there she tried out for Apollo, you know, Harlem. Won that, you know, um, I don't really know the story behind why she didn't keep pursuing it, mm -hmm. but she just decided, hey, I want to go, you know, fight for my country. She joined the military after she, you know, met my dad, and boom, three kids. I was the second, <laughs> middle, middle child, coolest child. <laughs> um, that's it. So, um, 
We're incredibly sorry for your loss, and we thank your mother and all veterans for their contributions mm -hmm. and um, the sacrifice that they make for our freedoms, yeah. right? Um, the freedom to even uh, do the show and, and articulate and express our beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like the memories that you have of your mother, um, they're not, they don't haunt you. Um, the nope. love that you have, um, you clearly cherish um, her and her, her talents and her beauty. Mm -hmm. um, do you um, call on, on those things um, when you're producing your music and when you make the, the decisions, when you find yourself in the tough spots that you're in? Uh, definitely. Um, I, I pray a lot. Um, I, you know, I talk to God. I also, I'm like, hey, you know, Mom, you know, be with me. Guide me in the, mm -hmm. in the right path, you know. Um, that's why, like, now that I'm 28, um, most people would be like, oh, I'm going to stop doing music. I'm just like, nah, like, you know, everything that has happened out of all the great things that have happened is like, hey, you know, that wasn't for you. You're getting guided in the right direction. So that's why I, don't, I can't stop, won't stop. Okay, and <laughs> the path that you're embarking on, um, mm -hmm. you're actually um, – I wouldn't say that you've stopped your your career um, as a ghostwriter, but you're looking more into the artist side of things. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, what made you pursue that side of the industry? Um, just I always wanted to be, you know, an artist. Um, like growing up doing talent shows, da da da. But I I don't know. I just got I don't I don't want to say like caught up in the whole writing for other people and just writing in general. But I was just like, hey, like. I feel like everybody that's a writer at one time wanted to be, <laughs> <laughs> you know, an artist. And I was just like, hey, you know, I, I want to do it. I can do it. I'm just as good as anybody else out there. Mm -hmm. I just have to find my niche and, you know, just get a name for myself and build a fan base. Are you still writing for artists? Like if we have any artists now that are interested in getting in contact, collabor collaborating with you, would you be interested in that? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Like anything music. Like anything. I, I, I love to work. I'm a workaholic <laughs> when it comes to that. Like, I'll be in the studio and not eat <laughs> until something's done. So. Mm -hmm. so what was your favorite project to work on? My favorite project? I got, I have got to say my favorite project to work on, I got to be selfish on this one, was mine. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, reason I say that is because it was, it was like my I mean, like my coming out party, I was like, hey, like, this is me as an artist. Yeah. Um, when you crossed over to sing yeah, more. Yeah, you know. Present yeah. yourself more as a singer. Yeah, you know, I, 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 it was just like, hey, like, there's so many avenues I can go with with this, you know. Um, pick an avenue that I went instead of being like a, a sing-songy or a, a full-on, like, Gerald LaVert mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean, something like that. I was just like, hey, you know, I want to do something that's me. It's fun. I like rap. I like gospel. I like R and B. I like mm -hmm. any type of music. So mm -hmm. at that point, like mm -hmm. all of all three of the songs and videos that I put out were just all a mixture of that. And it's I feel like it's really me. I'm not trying to be someone, or I'm not trying to imitate what the other people are mm -hmm. doing. So not just one project, but the music that you're producing that embodies you. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I have to ask. I want to ask for like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll give you three because mm -hmm. one would just be torture. But gotcha. what are what are three of your favorite songs of all time? Ooh, songs. <laughs> I thought you were going to say artists. I would have to say, I have to say um, Michael Jackson, Starting Something. Mm. I love that song. Um, another song, This World Were Mine. Oh, that's um, beautiful. And then going to hip hop, I would have to say Changes by Tupac. Yeah, that's definitely on my cardio list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he hit on a lot of things into that. And yeah. Yeah, I Changes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, where can we find you in the near future? Do you have any upcoming performances or projects you're working on? So, um, uh, right now, projects, I have an unnamed project that I'm working on. I'm taking my time on it because I, I want to, you know, want it to be perfect. Um, I don't want to take too much time, though, obviously. And uh, for performances, uh, it's just a work in progress, you know, me not being from uh, 
the Peoria area and not being from the Chicago area to get your foot in the door mm -hmm. is kind of hard, especially with this day and age with it being a total different, like, what, mixture of genres now. Mm -hmm. You have to really wow or do something, you know, that's a, a wow factor to get your foot in the door. So I'm just still working right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, anytime, anytime. There you have it, Peoria. Singer, songwriter, and best kept secret. I'm Ahaba More, and this is Mike Suncut.